Welcome back to the Self-Represented Litigant Society's series on legal terms. In this episode, legal terms that begin with the letter L. I often tell people that the law is essentially just words. And at its most basic, that's what the law is. They are statutes, acts, regulations, rules, standards, and principles that govern people. They're just words. What also should be included in there are cases. They are words that come from other judges. Uh, the previous aforementioned uh, acts and statutes, etc., principles, those are usually created by people who are elected, our government officials. Laws are open to interpretation, and that's what judges do. They interpret the law. They interpret words, and they give words meaning. And they can either be persuaded to think one way about a case or another based on what the law says. The Law Society of Upper Canada is a provincial body charged by the legislature with governing the legal profession and regulating the conduct of lawyers and paralegals in Ontario. There are law societies across Canada in each province, and they govern the lawyers in those provinces. If you have concerns about the conduct of a lawyer, how a lawyer has behaved, then you would contact a law society in your province to make a formal complaint. A lawyer or a barrister or solicitor is a person licensed through the law society to practice law. Now the practice of law is differentiated between, it, to some people, is differentiated between someone practicing law and someone who offers legal services. Now, only a lawyer or a paralegal can provide legal services in Ontario. Only a lawyer can practice law. I know it doesn't make much sense, but it's just a... There is some distinguishing factors. Now, the difference between a barrister and a solicitor is usually defined more by solicitors doing more transactional type legal work. And barristers being in front of the court. This only is in common law jurisdictions, and it's just another term for a lawyer. There are many terms for lawyers. You'll hear, hear the term counsel thrown around a lot. And counsel can refer to one or more lawyers. It's also good to note that in Canada here, uh, when a judge or a lawyer is referring to my friend, they're usually referring to the opposing lawyer. Leave is formal permission from the court. Now, sometimes if a person has acted unreasonably or in a manner that is thought to be without merit, the court can impose a restriction on a litigant to essentially prevent them from taking further action without quote-unquote, leave of the court, or permission of the court. A leading question is a question that directly or indirectly suggests the answer the witness is or should give, typically a yes or no answer. It is permitted in cross-examination, but not normally in direct examination or in chief examination. Take a look at Maves versus Grand Trunk Pacific Railway Company, 1913, uh, for more information on this matter. Leading questions may be put to a hostile witness in direct examination. So if I call a witness, usually I can't cross-examine them. But I can get special permission from the judge if that witness is hostile to me or my matter or my, uh, my position, I should say. There are other exceptions, such as matters not really in dispute, that can have leading questions come into play when I'm asking my own witness questions. The trial judge has the overriding power to allow leading questions in the interest of justice. Also take a look at R versus Coffin on this matter, 1956 case from the Supreme Court of Canada. Also, stay tuned for a video on the differences between cross-examination and in-chief examination here on this YouTube channel.
Legal aid is a service mainly funded by the government to assist those who are financially unable to retain a lawyer privately. Legal Aid Ontario administers Ontario's legal aid program, which includes legal aid clinics, duty counsel in courthouses, and certificates for private lawyers. Here in Ontario, legal aid primarily funds criminal cases and family law matters, especially involving children. There is a financial requirement, though, with the applicant needing to be under a certain threshold to apply. Legislation are acts or statutes passed by a governing authority, such as parliament or a provincial legislature. Statutes are referred to as federal legislation. Provincial legislation are enactments of provincial legislatures. Rules made by an inferior body by the virtue of the power vested by parliament or provincial legislatures are referred to as subordinate legislation or delegated legislation. A liability is a legal responsibility or a financial obligation. There are many types of liabilities. Here are the primary ones. Absolute liability. A person is held liable simply because they engaged in the behavior. No proof, or, no proof of intent or negligence is required for absolute liability. No defense is available. It's very rare to find an absolute liability charge. In the case of R versus the city of Sault Ste. Marie, 1978, the Supreme Court spoke out saying that there are only three types of, or three categories of offenses, true crimes, strict liability, and absolute liability. I encourage you to take a look at that case for further information. Joint liability, usually heard in uh, civil cases, is liability that's shared amongst parties. Limited liability is liability limited to contractual obligations or restricted by law. And an example of this could be a, an LLC, a limited liability corporation. This kind of company may distance or shield some of the directors of the corporation or the owners of the corporation it may shield some of their assets from liability. So if their company or the corporation is sued, somebody may not be able to go after somebody's personal assets, an owner's personal assets, for example. Several liability is liability that is separate from that of other parties. You'll often hear in lawsuits or in contracts that someone may be held jointly or severally liable. And those terms are not interchangeable, but they're commonly used together to prove or to suggest that someone could be uh, partially responsible for an action or an omission with someone else, and they may also be independently liable. If someone is held to be jointly and severally liable, this could mean increased damages against that person. Strict liability means a person is held liable because the act occurred. Some proof of intent or negligence is required, and therefore some defenses are available. See the case of R versus Sault Ste. Marie mentioned earlier for more information. Vicarious liability is liability when a person is held liable for the harm caused by another person. For example, an employer can be held vicariously liable for the actions of their employees. Libel, not to be confused with liability, is printed or permanent form of defamation. Uh, for example, writing, signs, or pictures that exposes a person to public scorn, hatred, or ridicule. It's essentially necessary to bring someone's reputation or lower their reputation in the community as an element of this tort. Section 296 of the Criminal Code criminalizes blasphemous libel. Uh, the last conviction for blasphemous libel was back in 1935, the case of R versus Rahard. No cases have ever challenged whether or not this section of the Criminal Code infringes on Section 2 of the Charter. The truth to a published alleged defamatory statement constitutes a total defense or a justification to an action for libel. The only other form of defamation is slander, which is spoken defamation. 
A lien is the right to hold property of another as security for the performance of an obligation. A limitation period is the statutory time limit for commencing a legal proceeding. Most limitation periods in Ontario are included in the Limitations Act. There are Limitations Act across Canada. Each province will dictate how long the limitation period is. I often encourage people to explore the limitation period before setting out on an action before doing so. Whether it's an action of a complaint against a police officer to a regulatory body, or whether it's a lawsuit, starting with if I'm able to sue somebody because of a limitation period is a good place to start. Litigation is just another name for a legal proceeding before a court or a tribunal. A litigation guardian in civil cases is a person who commences, continues, or defends a proceeding on behalf of a party under disability, who has the right to make decisions for the party under disability in the proceeding. If someone is acting in loco parentis, it means they are acting in place of a parent. That's the Latin term for a person who has acted intentionally towards a child in place of the natural parent and who provides for the needs of that child. See the case of Stitz versus CNR 1927 for more information. A long-term offender is a person who is convicted of certain criminal offenses and after an assessment, the court finds that the person is at high risk to reoffend, but can eventually be controlled in the community. Long-term offenders must serve their sentence of imprisonment, a minimum of two years, and then are supervised in the community for a period not exceeding 10 years. Compare this to dangerous offender, whereas an offender can be incarcerated indefinitely. Thank you for watching the Self-Represented Litigant Society's legal terms that begin with the letter L. Please stay tuned for more. Make sure you subscribe and like this video and visit the website for more information and visit the website for more great free legal information like this video. irepmyself.com